Is your job search online leading you nowhere? Are you wasting your time on fake Indeed job ads? We analyze Indeed's data. Do these jobs actually exist? You know, we recently published an analysis of the Indeed job postings data, and well, frankly, it caused quite the uproar, and perhaps for good reason. We spent quite a bit of time analyzing the data, probably more than any other video, and I think you'll find the results to be quite interesting. Now, to do so, we're going to compare the Indeed job postings data to the JOLTS job opening survey. That's the closest representation of the job openings data, more so than the non-farm payroll or the unemployment rates. Starting out, JOLTS, Job Openings and Labor Turnover Survey, published on a monthly basis. It's collected from a survey of employers based on actual job openings reported by companies. The JOLTS data is typically reported with a delay. That's important to mention. And there's rigorous quality control by the Bureau of Labor Statistics, so it's considered to be one of the more accurate data sets. On the other hand, we have Indeed. Aggregates job postings from various sources, including company websites, job boards, and individual employers. Some postings in Indeed might be duplicates. They might be outdated or even fraudulent. Indeed updates its listings more frequently. And it relies on automated systems and user reports to identify and remove fake job postings. The automated posting bots can inflate the numbers of job listings without corresponding real job opportunities. This is not a secret to those in the business. Indeed themselves actually post articles how to identify fake job postings. There's articles written such as over 80% of job recruiters admit to posting ghost jobs. That's what a study finds. And by the way, this article was published today. Fake job listings are everywhere. Here's how to avoid them. This is a big industry. Well, let's take a look at the job opening survey uh, that's in red. And then we have the blue line, the Indeed data. And we can see when one line trends up, so does the other. And also to the downside. The Indeed data is smoothed out because it's released more frequently. But other than that, we can see quite the strong correlation. However, this should trouble us. It should not be such a strong correlation. We understand that the Bureau of Labor Statistics has a vigorous quality control program, yet Indeed is ensconced with fake jobs and ghost jobs and fake postings, etc. Why are these two lines so close? That's troubling. We're going to tell you why. The jobs reported on Indeed, but not jolts, include the following. Freelance and gig jobs. Again, these are jobs you find on the Indeed website, but they're not measured by the JOLT survey. Also, temporary and contract positions, internships and volunteer positions, remote and flexible jobs, part-time jobs. This is the breakdown. Of all jobs reported on Indeed, 17% are freelance, 3.8% temporary and contract, very, very little in terms of internships. Remote and flexible jobs, 25%. And part-time jobs, almost 14%. Overall, almost 31% of all jobs on Indeed are included in the following categories, but are not included in the JOLT survey. The JOLT survey tends to measure strictly temp, uh, I'm sorry, full-time permanent positions. Well, compare the two. In blue, we have Indeed. Now, let's say we wanted to compare Indeed on an apples to apples basis to the JOLT survey. So we have to back out these temporary jobs and the gig work. Well, that's the red line. The red line is Indeed jobs, not including the temp jobs. And we can see quite the spread between the two. Again, almost 31% of the jobs out there, Indeed, are these temporary gig work type of categories. Now, in terms of the JOLT survey, we have our own uh, issues to talk about. Number one, seasonal adjustments. We spoke about this recently uh, in a prior video. And the seasonal adjustments, well, they're moving. They're used to remove the effects of predictable seasonal patterns such as holidays and temp jobs, which can cause fluctuations in the employment numbers. We think the best example is at the end of the year, the holiday shopping season, lots of temporary jobs are, are posted you know, to help out with the rush, and those jobs disappear at the beginning of the year. So to smooth out those spikes in the numbers, we have seasonal adjustments. They're for predictable patterns on an annual basis. Well, in blue, we have the job openings, the JOLTS report. Uh, in red, 
without the seasonal adjustments. And we can see here the red line is just more volatile. So there is a, a valid reason why we have seasonal adjustments to smooth out the spikes. So economists don't get very, very worried or very excited when, when we see a spike in the data. It could just be the end of the year holiday shopping hiring. In terms of the seasonal adjustments, we're going to talk about the spread, the seasonal adjustment spread. Now, this is something we just made up, but you know, bear with us. It's the reported number, including the seasonal adjustment. This is the headline that everybody reports, and minus the raw data. So we just want to figure out what is the seasonal adjustment. How much are they adding or subtracting to the number? Let's take a, a fictitious number. Reported number on the headline is 100. The raw data was actually 70. So the seasonal adjustment is 30. They just added 30 to the number for whatever reason. Now, this is the actual data for the JOLTS uh, data, the JOLTS job openings going back to 2001. Got a ton of data. And we can see here the latest report is August. The seasonal adjustment was a minus 55. So whatever the number was, they pulled it back. They discounted it 55. But what you'll notice is that this discount of 55 is less of a discount almost than ever before. They're subtracting back from the number. Let's say the number for the JOLT survey, you know, make up a number is 100. You know, years ago, they may have reported a 50, then it became 60. Now they're reporting 80. There's less of a discount. They're almost trying to push the number up. Now, let's take a look at the data historically. What we're going to do is exclude the COVID years. If you've been with us for any amount of time, I'm sure you've seen many of these charts, the non-farm payroll charts or whatever. There's a huge spike in the data because of the COVID crisis, first down and then up. So let's exclude that just for argument's sake. We'll take a look at the average. The latest report we have is August data. So let's take a look at the average from January through August. How much is the average seasonal adjustment? That number is minus 34. Now compare that to the historic average January through August, you know, same time period. And you'll see this is the lowest number. In 2019, before the COVID crisis, it was minus 86. Before that, 92. Going all the way to the bottom, we had a minus 118. In terms of a graphical uh, point of view, we can see this is the January through August average seasonal adjustment. And this year had the smallest subtraction from the data ever before. In other words, the seasonal adjusted subtractions are declining over time. It's almost as if they want to help the data over time. Whatever the job openings are, you know, for the month of August, they have to back it out, but they're backing it out less and less. And it looks like they're trying to help the data along. Putting it all together... We have the jobs posted on Indeed, and not just Indeed, to be fair, other websites, of course, they should all be scrutinized. It's a big industry out there, these fake job ads. I don't know why they're doing it, maybe to sell ads, but they are. The websites and the government surveys, they measure different data sets. So if there's a difference between the two and there should be a difference between the two, well, you know, that's the reason why. And the government data sets, the seasonal adjustments they themselves are also being adjusted. Why is that? Well, that leads us to speculation, and that's a short trip to conspiracy theory, which of course we can't validate here with the raw data. Uh, but just keep in mind that the numbers, either on the public or private sector, they should be scrutinized. If you feel frustrated in the job search, there's reason to. You're not alone. We'd love your opinion. What is the best job search in your experience? Indeed, LinkedIn, Career Builder, uh, ZipRecruiter, Glassdoor, maybe another method. If you've discovered something that works, share it here. Certainly might be helping somebody out as well. We thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you back soon.